We're working on a piece on Project 2025 mm -hmm. because it's very important to cover that. And the media hasn't been talking enough about that. I mean, when you look at Biden versus Trump and the media keeps trying to highlight Biden's age, his, you know, he trips over stuff. He, right. you know, whatever. He's 81. Yeah. Shit happens. You trip. Right. And <laughs> Donald Trump is planning to, on day one, <laughs> uh, implement Schedule F, which is going to make tens of thousands of federal workers um, put into a category where they can just be replaced by people that they already have signed up and waiting for a position yes. uh, that are sympathetic and supportive of Donald Trump and his policies and ready to go on day one and completely transform the government. And so, I mean, that seems like something that they should be talking more about when they're talking about Biden's age. Yeah, Donald Trump is absolutely going to, Donald Trump, maybe not himself, but the people he's put around him, are, they've learned from their mistakes in the first term, and they're going to implement some insane shit in a second term. And for the 25-year-old garbage man from Pennsylvania or the 25-year-old financial analyst in, in Las Vegas, it's going to be a world of hurt. For people who, well, Biden's being too lenient on Iran and Iraq. Like, what? What are you, what, what are you talking about? I, I don't know. I, it's We definitely need to do a better job of, of being patient and being instructive and helping these people do, learn, because they are voters. But I don't have to be happy about it, right? I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Well, so on this note, I, you know, I love to torture myself by watching Bill Maher. And I watch not not the whole thing. I, I watch the clips that they upload on YouTube to see if there can be some potential videos that we can use yeah. on, on the show, really. But um, he had Adam Kinzinger on. And Adam Kinzinger, of, of course, is one of the Republicans that was on the January 6th committee with Liz Cheney and worked in opposition to Donald Trump and is no longer in office and it wrote a book and has been making the rounds. I think he's a commentator now on CNN and, and different panels. But during overtime, which is this period after Bill Maher's show where they take audience questions, there was an, uh, an audience member who asked, you know, since Adam Kinzinger is fighting extremism on the right, how can we fight extremism on the left? And I guess as you're listening to this conversation... I just want you to be thinking about, like, what is extremism on the left? Uh, Adam, as a Republican who stood up to extremists in your party, what advice do you have for Democrats who are trying to combat the far left? Okay, listen, this is the best thing because I, there was a guy, he was a Californian, uh, Dana Rohrbacher, that was like the only yeah. pro-Russian Republican I remember for a while. Him. And people would, I'd take him on in the Foreign Affairs Committee and people would say, hey, just let, you know, he's just one person. He's probably being paid by the FSB, right, whatever. Well, that crazy ends up like overtaking the party. The crazy of, you know, nobody imagined Donald Trump in 2014. You've got to kill extremism in the cradle or it takes over. Because if you, re if you look at your coalition and say, we need this extreme, we need the pro-Hamas faction or we need the, you know, the anti-Russia faction or the pro-Russia faction, they end up calling the shots. Because if everybody in this room has a grenade, right, we're all equally powerful. If somebody's willing to pull the pin, they're the most powerful person in the room and extremists are willing to pull the pin you have got to be willing i don't know pull the pin with them or whatever you've got to be willing to fight back did you ever hear that tape of paul ryan kevin mccarthy and steve scalise talking about uh Robacher and trump yeah yeah okay if people don't yeah. remember this I and mean, this is uh, the fact that this doesn't get more play I, don't, I mean this is years ago but this is on tape yep. and one of them says i think there's two people on putin's payroll yep that was one of them is Rohrbacher, and one of them is Trump. And the, the other two don't go, oh my God, let's do something about it. They say, this stays in the family, right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. So just briefly, funny audience reaction, I don't know. <laughs> um, the people that he's talking about that had that conversation, Kevin McCarthy is the one who said that about yes. Donald Trump. And Dana Rohrbacher, who was um, our congressman for a while. That's right. And uh, the 48th district of California. And Paul Ryan is the Republican who stepped in and said, let's keep that in here. Let's yeah. not take that out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Just to give context there. But let's let's address the fact that th the question was asked of how do we combat um, extremism on the right and then also extremism on the left? What power do extremists on the left have? What chance 
of getting into the presidency do extremists on the left have? None. It isn't a balance of power dynamic at all here. The right has a real shot at maintain, gaining again and maintaining power and destroying our democracy, literally ending democracy in America. What are what extremists are they? T- no one ever mentioned it. In fact, Adam Kinzinger, he didn't even talk about the left. He only talked about the threat that the right poses. He did say something strange, which was the uh, the pro Hamas faction. And so I'm wondering, who is that? right? I'm wondering who who is it that is uh, an elected <sighs> official that is has been vocally pro Hamas. No, there hasn't been one single elected official that has been pro Hamas. There are people who are sympathetic and empathetic to the plight of the Palestinian people, much like I am, much like you are. Absolutely. Because dead babies is a problem. I'm also sympathetic to the, 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 the thousands of Jewish people in Israel, who were attacked by Hamas, which is a ter- a brutal, insane death cult. It is a terrorist organization. Absolutely. So if there are extremists out there that support Hamas, they're not in power. They're just assholes protesting. Mm-hmm. They're not en masse. There's not a, it's not a, a giant block of voters. It's a few extremists with loud voices. That's not the case with what we see in the Republican Party and the dangerous extremists on the right. Remember, Marjorie Taylor Greene was kicked out of the Freedom Caucus, the extremist caucus in the House of Representatives, because she was too mainstream, too too cuddly with Kevin McCarthy. Mm -hmm. Marjorie Taylor Greene is not extreme enough for extremist Republicans. That should tell you everything you need to know while these idiots commiserate and wring their hands about the the the, the equalness, the 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 the, the similar uh danger levels that are posed by the extremists on the left and the extremists on the right. It just it's it's absolute nonsense. Yeah, and again, it's a failure of this show, of Bill Maher, yes. of everyone on that panel, of anyone who goes on Bill Maher's show to not talk about how there is a tremendous difference between Republicans and Democrats. And, you know, you can make jokes about how that both parties are ineffective, both far- parties aren't doing what we want them to do. Listen, I wish that the Democratic Party was far more progressive and would implement far more progressive policies than it has. But I'm not going to uh, sacrifice our democracy in the process and our chance at getting yeah. progressive policies put into place. So it's very frustrating to hear Bill Maher, who still calls himself a liberal for some Please. reason, um, that you know he continues to fail again and again and again in talking about the real danger and the real threat here from the Republican Party. He's also still widely embraced by mainstream media, getting interviews, people quoting him as though his opinion matters at all when he's a, he's a bigot, he's an anti-trans, fucking bigot he is an anti-science anti-vax lunatic and cnn still broadcasts his bullshit on their channel yeah it is it is disgusting and bill maher should be a, a, a scourge he should be avoided by everyone as though he himself is a fucking pestilence and a virus